If you don't know what a KVM switch is, it's a device that allows you to connect multiple computers to one device, which allows you to control them with a single keyboard, monitor, and mouse. They're relatively cheap, unless you're looking for an IP-based one that will allow you to connect over the network. IP KVMs are really expensive. That is, until the Raspberry Pi Pi KVM came along. The Pi KVM is a Raspberry Pi-based KVM switch which allows you to remotely control a computer using a web browser and a mouse from anywhere in the world. It runs a web server that lets you connect to any computer connected to it and remote control it as if you're sitting right in front of it without plugins or installing any agents on the device. It's much more capable than remote controlling it using a remote desktop client, and it can even let you remote control a machine before it boots to let you change things in the BIOS or even reformat and reinstall your operating system remotely. This is all great except for one small thing. Unlike traditional KVMs that let you control multiple devices, the Pi KVM is really meant for controlling just one device. The Pi KVM is built with just one HDMI input and one keyboard and mouse input, while traditional KVMs have multiple inputs for multiple clients. So how can we scale the Pi KVM to connect it to more devices so that we aren't stuck moving it from machine to machine each time we need to remote control one of our other devices. That and more, right after a word from our sponsor, Micro Center. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than Micro Center. If you've never been to Micro Center, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs, to hard drives, to power supplies, to memory, to air and water cooling, to motherboards, to video cards, to processors, and more. It's your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. And Micro Center has the best selection and prices whether you visit one of their 25 locations across the US or if you decide to shop online. But you should come visit your one true love this February. Your local Micro Center build your own department. Their helpful staff is ready to help you build your next PC with a combo like this AMD Ryzen 5 3600 and gigabyte motherboard combo deal or many other deals that run all month long. And if you don't want to figure all this out in store, check out Micro Center's custom PC builder where you can build your PC online without the hassle of trying to find compatible parts. Then, after you've built your PC, show it off in the Micro Center Build Showcase and upon approval, receive a coupon for your next in-store purchase. Also, Micro Center is giving away a free SSD to all new customers, no purchase necessary, in-store only. So be sure to see the link in the description for details. You can build a Pi KVM yourself by purchasing the Pi KVM V3 hat, which is a great choice if you already have a Raspberry Pi 4 and are willing to build it yourself. Or if you have a Pi Zero, you can even build it using some inexpensive parts and without soldering. But chances are you have neither since Raspberry Pis are impossible to find and buying a pre-assembled kit is the only option. It was for me, and that's what I ended up doing. I purchased the Pi KVM V3 pre-assembled, which comes with the Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model, a 32 gig micro SD card, power supply, an HDMI cable, a USB-C to USB-A cable, and a nice case. This case is solid. It's steel, it's solid, like I mentioned, sturdy and industrial. If we look at the Pi KVM, it has lots of connections for power, USB devices, mouse and keyboard emulation, RJ45 to serial connection, HDMI, and even an RJ45 connector for ATX power, which allows me to hook this up to a motherboard and power it on and off remotely. The other cool thing that you get with a pre-assembled is this little LCD right here that shows you system information and a cute cat when it boots. It comes pre-flashed with Pi KVM installed and ready to go. Oh, and it runs Arch, by the way. But before we connect everything, remember when I said I wanted to connect it to more than one device? Well, I wanted to connect it to eight times that. <laughs> yes, eight devices. I found this HDMI KVM switcher with a USB hub that I thought would be perfect for it. This TE Smart allows you to connect up to eight devices with video and USB and has a built-in USB hub. It also has an RJ45 Ethernet port that allows me to change the input over IP, and <laughs> that's it. It's not an IP-based KVM, otherwise I wouldn't need the Pi KVM, but being able to switch the input over IP is all I needed to automate this with the Pi KVM. I thought this device was perfect for remote controlling some of my servers, considering it is rack-mountable. 
However, there was just one catch that would almost ruin this entire project that I didn't know about yet. I tested the Pi KVM on my workbench with an old Intel NUC and it worked fine. I was able to remote control it, even power it on and off using Wake on LAN. I chalked it up as a success and started moving everything into my server rack. It might not seem like it, but mounting this HDMI KVM switch took quite some time. I had to run all of the HDMI cables and USB-B cables to and from the devices that I wanted to remote control. So I started running up the wires and I only wired up four devices just to be sure that it worked with my existing machine before wiring up all eight. But I bet you're asking, why I just don't use IPMI that I have on my servers? This isn't to control my servers, it's to control my rack mounted PC conversion along with my new Intel NUC cluster. None of these machines have IPMI, so that's why I needed an IPKVM solution like the Pi KVM. I decided to put my Pi KVM on this little shelf for now, but I'll probably find somewhere a little more permanent to place it later. Once I had everything hooked up, that's when the troubles began. You see, I could remote into some of the NUX running Linux and the PC conversion machine, but not the ones running Windows. I thought for sure there was something wrong with my connection, so I checked all of the connections over and over again. It was right around that time that the creator of the Pi KVM, Max Devayev, reached out asking me how I was liking the Pi KVM and to let him know that if I ran into any troubles, because he was interested in advanced use cases of the Pi KVM. I'm not sure why he thought I was going to be the one using this in an advanced way, but he was right. Simple way, as intended. I worked with Max for a few days on and off over Discord. He sent snippets of code for me to run and even gave me lots of EDIDs to try. I had no idea what EDIDs were until he sent them to me and I Googled them really fast. But EDIDs are signature or metadata that tell a monitor how to work with a device. Sometimes we could get Linux machines running on the TE smart switch working, but then not the Windows machines. And other times we can get the Windows machine working with the switch, but not the Linux machines. We ended up discovering that the TE Smart HDMI switch would poison the Pi KVM and send it the TE Smart EDID rather than the one from the Pi KVM. At this point, I just had to cut my losses and go with a smaller, non rack mountable, but more compatible EasyCoo KVM switch. And I have to say, it is fantastic. This is the EasyCoo HDMI KVM switch. It's a four port HDMI KVM switch that allows four HDMI ports to be switched to a single display. This single display will be the Pi KVM. It also has a built-in USB 3 hub, which is awesome for plugging in USB devices that will connect to each machine when you switch the input. It has four HDMI inputs and one USB 3 input that you'll connect to each machine and has one HDMI out and one USB for keyboard and one for mouse. Now, we won't be using these specific keyboard and mouse USB ports because we'll be using the mouse and keyboard emulation in one plugged into the generic USB port. The real magic of this device is that it has a micro USB management port on the side that the Pi KVM can use to control and toggle the inputs automatically, giving us a way to switch between all of our connected devices without having to manually press the input button. As nice as this device is, I really wish they made an eight port rack mountable one because I wanna control more than four devices without swapping them out or daisy chaining them, which is why I wanted the TE Smart switch in the beginning. Oh, speaking of the TE Smart, after working with Max for a while on this device, he mentioned that it might work with the new V4 version of the Pi KVM, which just recently launched on Kickstarter. He said he was going to send one of their prototypes to me to test, so fingers crossed, it works. I will be sure to create a V4 video once it's released and hopefully it supports the TE Smart Switch. Now that I had everything working the way it should, it was time to connect to each device through the web portal. And once I connected, I can toggle between each of my devices from here. From my first Intel NUC running Ubuntu, to my second Intel NUC running Windows 10, to my third Intel NUC running Windows 11, to my PC conversion running Ubuntu server. And you can see it here that it's pretty snappy. The latency is really low and you can even run HD videos no problem at all. If I do run into any latency issues or I'm on a slow connection, I can change the protocol and even the bitrate to something more fitting. 
But running HD videos probably isn't the reason you want a KVM. It's more likely that you want to have access to the machine while it boots. And here's where it gets really awesome. I can shut down this machine and then wake it up using a wake on land packet to power it back on. Side note, I learned a ton about making wake on land work for Windows and Linux, and I'll be updating my blogs with complete walkthroughs of how to enable it. But anyway, if that wasn't cool enough, I can then get into the BIOS of this machine to make any changes that I want. I can change the boot order. I can change boot devices. I can overclock the machine and do anything I normally couldn't do without being right in front of the machine. I can even upload ISOs to the Pi KVM and then attach them to the device virtually and boot from it and install any operating system. This lets me rebuild any of my machines, no matter what state they're in, no matter where I am in the world, all from a web browser. Want to install Linux on a machine that's powered off? No problem. Just attach the virtual drive to the machine, send a wake on LAN packet to wake it up, then boot to the virtual drive, and install. You could also attach the ATX power control to the header of the motherboard if you like and power it on that way. But I have network access to all of my machines, so I will make use of Wake on LAN. Plus, <laughs> it's super awesome to be able to wake machines up over the network. And here's where it gets really awesome, if it could get even more awesome. <laughs> Remember how I said that my KVM also has a USB hub? Well, I've attached a 64 gig USB drive to it with Ventoy installed that has every ISO I could ever need. As I switch inputs between machines, it attaches the USB drive with Ventoy installed to each machine, allowing me to install any operating system I want. This is so cool. And because the Pi KVM is hackable, I've customized the GPIO menu to let me switch between devices to wake them up, wake them up on different NICs, restart the KVM service, or even restart the Pi KVM itself. I should say <laughs> that I didn't really hack it. This isn't a Techno Tim hack. <laughs> There's an overrides file that lets you customize most of the Pi KVM, so I didn't go totally off the rails. It even has a web UI to give you terminal access to your Pi KVM in the case that you aren't able to SSH in, which is super handy if you're on mobile. But this little device has so many features and the fact that it's open source and continues to be developed makes this solution such a great investment for me. So I bet you're wondering, is it worth it? Well, I'm gonna break this down into two parts. Is it worth it to buy it pre-assembled? And is it worth it to remote control with a Pi KVM? It is for me for a few reasons. First of all, I can't find a Raspberry Pi to assemble this myself. And if you consider it comes with a case, a fan, a 32 gig micro SD card, additional cables, and even a little LCD screen, and it's 100% ready to go for an additional 90 bucks? I would say it is. Now on to the tougher question. Is it worth it to have a Pi KVM at all? I would say for me, it's also yes, but for you, it depends. The way that I looked at it was that I was going to scale this to eight, which I would divide the cost of the Pi KVM and the switch across eight machines, making it around $70 per machine if you include all the cables. I'd say that's worth it for me to have remote access to that many machines for the life of each machine and even ones I replace it with, but I did have to downgrade it to a smaller switch that only gives me access to four machines, which is roughly $95 per machine. Now that's a little bit higher. However, it's a much better value than just remote controlling one machine with the Pi KVM, which makes the value the cost of the Pi KVM. <laughs> well, I learned a ton about KVMs, Arch Linux, Wake on LAN, and even EDIDs, and I hope you learned something too. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Good stream, good vibes. Uh, like like last stream. Last stream was 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 fantastic. Uh, got to talk a lot about tech, and I just felt at the end I was like, oh my my nerdy tech heart is just full. Because <laughs> I uh, I don't get to. I mean, I get to talk about this a little bit at work, but 